Welcome to this video tutorial where we will be covering how to perform evaluations based in cost and how to use meta models within RapidMiner. To start, we're going to import a new dataset into RapidMiner. It is one of the datasets which have been provided with uh, the material of the course. You should go to the folder where you have uncompressed the zip file I have provided and it is the uh, spec tf uh, uh, dataset is single positron emission computer tomography features they are features obtained from medical imaging of the heart and besides the feature itself there is a diagnosis of whether the heart has some condition or not so we have imported the csv version of this uh, dataset it is imported correctly in the second step of importing we need to move to the last feature we see that we have 44 numeric features and the last one it is actually whether the patient has some condition or not it is being recognized as integer but it is really a, binar a binomial feature because it can only take one this is zero not this is and we also going to change the role because this is the label this is the class this is what we would like to be able to predict and we import it into the local repository and if we inspect the data we see that we only have 80 examples 80 instances that's a low number of instances and we have 44 attributes therefore we have way too many attributes for the low number of instances we have the uh, model i'm going to train in this tutorial is a decision tree a decision tree implicitly when the decision tree is being built it is applying feature selection because at each step is looking for the feature which looks more promising to keep growing the decision tree and not all the features available needs to be used so it's a model which implicitly is using um, feature selection if i was going to use for example a neural network which will use every single feature provided i should try to apply feature selection before actually moving to train the model because it's way too many uh, features for just 80 uh, examples let's go to design i'm going to drag the data set, I'm going to train a decision tree over this data set and I'm going to compute the performance accuracy of the train model over the same data set I have used for training remember that this is something i sh should really never do because i'm overestimating the performance of the decision tree by using the same data set for training and for validation however i'm going to start by doing this in order to try to keep it as simple as possible later i'll correct this so let's run the process and we have here a confusion matrix these are the uh, non-healthy, the diseased hearts, these are the uh, healthy hearts, we have 40-40, 40 healthy patients, 40 patients with disease and we see that uh, we never have predicted, the model never predicted disease for a healthy heart however the model predicted six times not disease for a heart with this heart some condition Accuracy is 92.5%. This is the confusion matrix, and these are the six errors we the model made. However, the type of errors which have been made here are actually the most expensive errors in the real world because these are unhealthy patients, patients who have some conditions which we are telling them they are healthy. This type of error here, which will be a healthy patient to which we tell that they have some condition and maybe we want to do additional tests to make sure they have this condition or start giving them some drugs, those errors will have less cost for the health of the patient and will be preferable in the real world. Let's go back to the designer and let's evaluate the performance of this model, not based on accuracy, but based on cost. 
this uh, evaluation operator validation operator cost it will compute the performance of the model based on some cost matrix I need to specify the cost matrix by changing the parameters of the uh, operator here I can edit the cost matrix I'm going to define a matrix of 2 by 2 in the diagonal the values of the cost they're gonna be zeros because in that case we are making the right prediction and let's suppose that the cost of telling a healthy patient that he has some condition is 1 and the cost of telling a non-healthy patient that he's fine is 10 these are arbitrary units uh, what I'm trying to specify here is that I rather tell nine patients that they are unhealthy where they are healthy before telling one unhealthy patient that he is healthy in a real world scenario I would probably would like to try to find out what will be the cost the monetary cost for the hospital and the cost for the health of the patient measuring euros in order to establish proper values here but here I'm just preferring that 10 of these errors are equivalent excuse me 10 of these errors are equivalent to a single of these other type of errors the only thing uh, we're we are doing here with this operator is to compute a second performance metric for the model we are training here the model is still being training without taking into account the cost if I run the process now besides having the measure for the accuracy and the confusion matrix I also have a measure for the cost the cost is 0 0.75 that cost is being given per instance is how rapid miners does it so it's the cost overall cost divided by the number of instances in the testing data set okay let's copy again let's copy this setup And I'm going to remove the decision tree here and I'm going to add the meta cost predictive operator. Meta cost is an operator which enables me to train predictive models based on cost by taking into account a cost matrix during the training of the model, not just for evaluation so the meta cost is a nested operator within the operator I need to specify which model I want to train based in cost is going to be the same as before the decision tree and I also need to specify a cost matrix that is going to be used in this case during training not just for computing a performance metric of the model I'm going to specify the same cost matrix as before and this cost matrix now is telling the decision tree that a single instance of a, a healthy patient classified as healthy counts as 10 errors not as a single error so when computing entropy in order to keep growing the decision tree this is actually a single misclassified instances of this type is 10 errors while a, unhealthy a healthy patient classified as unhealthy is only one error that's the way of telling the decision tree that we prefer to make these errors before making this other type of errors so now if I run the process if I check the performance of the new decision tree is 75 77.5 percent is way less performance than the Y I had for the original decision tree I have lost around 15 uh, percent accuracy when compared with the original decision tree however the cost has decreased to 0 0.22 from 0 0.25 and this cost is what I really care about when performing an evaluation based in cost the type of errors that my model is now making are less costly I'm making more errors in the 
evaluation based, uh, not based in cost. I only made six errors. They were this type of errors. Now I'm making, when taking into account cost, zero of that type of errors. And <coughs> excuse me, in the evaluation based in cost, I'm making 18 of this type of errors, which are healthy patients misclassify as unhealthy while before I've made no one but these type of errors are preferable that's what my cost matrix was specifying now I'm making more errors but more errors of the type which had less cost and the cost of my model is inferior of course we know that these both setups are completely wrong because I'm evaluating the model over the same training data and that's always wrong. So let's do this the proper way. Let's use a cross-fold validation in order to train the model over one data set and validate the model over another different set of data. And besides that, instead of having just a single measure of the performance, I would like to have some confidence intervals for my performance. So I'm going to get the cross-fold validation operator. The meta cost operator with the decision tree inside and with the decision matrix is going to be with the cost matrix is going to be the first part of the cross fault validation operator. And then we're going to measure both accuracy and cost of the model we have trained in the first stage. By default is gonna use 10 folds, so we're gonna train 10 models. We're gonna compute 10 measures of accuracy and cost, and we're going to compute the mean and the standard deviation. Now, okay, I forgot to connect the the testing data to the applied model operator within the process. And now if we run this, we're going to have better estimations of the accuracy. The accuracy now uh, is 54 plus minus 10% approximately of the model based on cost. And the cost is 0 0.57 plus minus 0 0.4. The cost, uh, we, we have a relatively wide confidence intervals. That's probably because we have not too much data, yes, uh, 80 instances overall. But now we have 95% confidence interval. We know that the real uh, cost of applying this model over real data should be in this confidence interval 95% of the time. And we know that the real accuracy of the model should be in this interval 95% of the time again. So with this, we are done with evaluation based on cost. The second setup, the third setup, excuse me, is the, the one you should use. Uh, cost based evaluation should also be used uh, uh, with a cross fault validation or a similar technique in order to compute some confidence intervals. And we should definitely never use the same data for training and testing. The first two setups have been made here just as uh, educational illustrative setups in order to understand what's the meaning of the cost based evaluation and the cost-based training and evaluation. I'm going to save this setup now. Cost-based evaluation. <coughs> and I'm going to create a new process. 
I'm going to drag one of the data sets we have used before, which is the, the breast tissue data set. This data set it was uh, information about different samples of tissue taken from the breast of uh, 106 females and the class is the type of tissue which is this sometimes is a bending tissue sometimes it's some tumoral type tissue we have uh, five or six classes five different classes of tissue in this case we have nine attributes, nine square 81 is less than 106 so we are more or less in the limit of uh, number of attributes for the number of instances we have but again I'm going to use a decision tree which uh, already has a part of the training of the model an implicit step of feature selection so I'm not going to worry about the dimensionality reduction step and I'm going to look for a decision tree and I'm going to evaluate the performance of the model I again going to do this in the wrong way by computing the performance over the same data I have used for training just for uh, illustrative purposes I'll do it in the right way later So here where, is where I'm going to do what I should never really do in the real world, the same data I have used for training I'm going to use for testing and let's just run this process and we managed to classify correctly almost 87% of the uh, different tissues and here we have the confusion matrix for uh, some tissues I seem to be doing better than for the other ones this I classify perfectly but here for example I have much more mistakes Okay, we're going to try to improve the performance of the decision tree by using combinations of models. So I'm going to copy this setup. And instead of using a single decision tree, I'm going to use multiple decision trees by using the bugging technique. In bagging, I'm going to resample the original data set and I'm going to train the model over that resample version of the data set. I'm going to resample with replacement and I'll be training the, the, the decision tree over that uh, set of resample data. And I'm going to that, do that 10 times. I'm going to really generate 10 different decision trees and the final model is going to be the bolt aggregation of the 10 decision trees the majority bolt among those 10 different decision trees I'm using 10, I could use any other number is going to be my final uh, prediction for the type of um, for the type of tissue I forgot to put within the bagging operator the model I want to train the bagging operator is a nested operator I can nest any predictive model the one I want to nest here is the decision tree so we are comparing apples to apples in the first setup we train a single decision tree here we're going to train 10 decision tree by slightly modifying the training set in order to get slightly different decision trees and I have increased the accuracy from 87% to 92.45% I'm going to copy again this setup And instead of using bugging, I'm going to use boosting. Boosting is a similar idea to bugging. But in this case, what we're going to do is train the first model, see what is the accuracy and what are the mistakes that the first model is making, and increase the weight of the incorrectly classified instances. And we'll keep doing that iteratively several times in such a way that we are forcing the, mo the models that I'm training to focus more on the errors made by the first, by the previous models. 
So again, we're going to use a decision tree and we are using again 10 iterations of boosting. We want to train 10 models. The second model is going to focus more on the errors of the first model. The third model is going to focus more on the errors of the previous models and so on. And in order to achieve this, we are increasing the weight of the instances which had been misclassified by the previous models. Okay, I'm missing a connection here. And in this case, we managed to improve accuracy to 97%. So we move from 92% with the standard decision, no, excuse me, 87%, more or less, with the standard decision tree, to 92% with bugging, to 97% with boosting. I'm going to copy once more this setup. Excuse me. And I'm going to look for the boat. Boat is also a meta model which is going to aggregate multiple models which in this case need not to be of the same type. With bugging and boosting and training the same model over slightly modified versions of the training datasets, but with both I'm going to aggregate multiple models and each of them is going to be boating in order to decide what is the final prediction. Those models, they're going to be trained over the same training data set, so the models should be different. We're going to start by just reusing the three models we already have here. So I'm going to go within the boat operator and I'm passing over there the three models that I have using the three setups I had. So I'm going to train the decision tree, 10 decision tree with bugging, 10 decision tree with boosting. I'm going to be opting each of these models here. And in this case, I don't need to limit myself to decision tree at, at all. I can go, for example, for a deep neural network, for example. I can use naive days, for example, and overall I'm going to have five models. A single decision tree, another model providing a single vote to the uh, voting operator made up by 10 decision trees, ten trained by bugging, another model made up by 10 decision trees trained by boosting, deep learning, and naive days. And each of them is going to be voting. Whatever gets three votes of more, or whatever is the majority class, is going to be the one chosen uh, by the vote model. I'm going to have to drag again the breast tissue dataset because for some reason I don't really understand. The vote operator does not have an output port with the original uh, set of data used for training. Pretty much all the operators within RapidMiner, the input data is available at some output port. In the boat, we don't have that uh, training data available, so I need to feed the same data sets. This is the same data to the applied model. Uh, I didn't need to copy the breast tissue data set for the other cases because I have the data available in one of those output ports. I'm going to run the process, and in this case, the boat got a Accuracy of 92% is not really that, it's even worse than the boosting. The boosting by itself did better, but we are still doing better than a single decision tree. Of course, all this setup I have made here, they are completely wrong because I'm validating all the models over the same training that I said, something I should never do. So let's do it in the proper way by using a cross fall validation. I'm going to drag a cross fall operator here. I'm going to cut the decision tree. Paste here. 
the decision tree and I'm going to use the same setup for evaluating the performance this is the proper way of training the decision tree and estimating some confidence interval for the accuracy of the model and not what I did first which is always incorrect I just did it for didactical purposes but this is the proper way of doing it given that the evaluation part is always the, the same I'm going to remove these operators here and I'm going to copy four times the initial cross-fold validation operator I'm going to nest each of the models in the cross-fold validation operators the validation part will always be the same but here instead using the single decision tree we're going to train the 10 decision trees In this cross-fold validation operator we're going to train 10 decision trees by using boosting And in the last one we're going to train the boat model where we have the three previous strategies plus a deep learning neural network and a naive base classifier. So now I am training and validating in a proper way those models and I'll be getting some confidence intervals okay I forgot I think I forgot to feed the the testing data to all the uh, cross-fold validation operators And now we have four measures of accuracy for the four different models with confidence intervals. The single decision tree is 67 plus minus 11 percent. The bugging, it has increased slightly the performance, not too much. It has narrowed the confidence interval. Boosting, it has increased a little bit the performance also. And the voting one hasn't really increased the original performance but these are measures which uh, are more reliable of the real performance of these different models than the one I got initially which one is the best option the one where I got the higher accuracy this 68 percent of thing with boosting is the best model however it is one of the one who has the widest confidence interval so the real performance of the model in the real world may vary much more but how can I affirm if this model which is the one where we are using boosting with 10 decision trees is better or not than the others of course I'm not gonna be based just on this number I need to apply some statistical test in order to see if these differences are statistically significant or not and I can do that quite easily within rapid miner by using the t-test operator the t-test operator can be fed as many performance results as you want and it will apply t-test comparing
the four means and standard variances that we're going to obtain by applying cross-fault validation. I have the original performance available as output path and this is the significant test. If I run this, I'm going to get my p-values and for example this is telling me that uh, the ABC, uh, these are the different models. I have overall here uh, four different models, decision tree, bagging, boosting, both and this is telling me that uh, for example the uh, p-value when comparing bagging and the single decision tree is 0 0.98 therefore I cannot affirm at all at all that uh, bagging is better than the single decision tree. All my p-values are quite high. Uh, the small one is when comparing the, the voting. Uh, this will be the comparison of uh, voting with boosting. This is the best p-value I'm getting but it's still 0 0.6, uh, quite far from the standard p-value of 0 0.05 that is typically used. So given the p-values I have here uh, I cannot affirm at all that any of these four models is statistically significantly better than the others. Uh, this is probably also due to the fact that I only have a hundred instances in my uh, data set so I don't have a lot of data and it's much harder to get statistical significance with that few data. Let's go back to the design and in order to get some statistically significant results I'm going to go for the first cross-fault validator I'm going to remove the decision tree and I'm going to use a model which is called decision stamp a decision stamp is a single a decision tree which only has the root and nothing else it's a decision tree with a single level we're going to just make a single decision and we are not going to keep growing the tree. It's going to be like a, if I have a full tree and I cut it and I just leave the stamp of the tree. That's why it's called a decision stamp. So it's a very, very basic model. It's a very simple model and it should have much worse performance than the other models. So let's run this process here. And indeed the decision stamp value 0, 0, 0 when compared with bagging, boosting, voting, the decision stamp is statistically significantly worse than any of the other three models. I cannot affirm yet that the other three models are better or worse than each other, however. When performing this type of evaluation, here we are using the TIS test over accuracy measures. You can use it over cost if your problem is uh, the type of problem where different errors have different costs. Uh, the first type of uh, problem we deal with in this tutorial, the one where we're trying to diagnose disease, non-disease, is uh, one clear case where it makes more sense to use cost-based evaluation rather than just accuracy-based evaluation. If you are using cost and if the output of your cross-fault validation operator instead being accuracies, a vector of 10 accuracies, because I really have 13 different models and I have 10 different accuracies here, is a vector with 10 different costs, you can still apply the same t-test and you're gonna get exactly in the same way p-values in order to see if uh, any of the cost of the different models you have trained is statistically better or worse than, than uh, the the others. And with this we, we are done with this tutorial.